Lifeguarding is emotionally taxing, even more so when the lifeguards are dealing with someone they know. I need to sit out. <laughs> need to get me breath back. It's very physical and it's, and it's emotional too, you know, so I, I'm a wreck. Like, and you don't get it out of me much, but that was full on. <laughs> Mother of two, Amita, has been searching for her three-year-old son since he ran off more than 30 minutes ago. The temperature is over 40 degrees, and Amita has been carrying her five-year-old son as she searched the beach. The mother was quite seriously stressed on a really stinking hot Sunday. She looked like she had a heat stroke. Man, you really need to please. You need to, you need to stop crying so you can the house. Managing the parents can be really challenging. We need them to help us and assist us in finding the child. What, what's he wearing? What, what t-shirt? He's wearing like a white and this singlet and a long oh. short shorts. And what's his what? name? Manny. Maddie. Immediately I went off and started the search and then Jules came in, she checked the girls' toilets, we looped around the pavilion. It's the end of the day and light is fading. Boys are going out on the beach. Little Manny's three years old. You know, I was worried for the little man. <laughs> Maddie! <laughs> All right, I've covered through the pavilion. Just looping along the beach now. The search reaches the 40-minute mark, and there is no sign of the young boy. I've lost one of my children at Clove Valley Beach one day, and it's something that I'll never forget for as long as I live. You literally feel like you're going to be sick. It's going to be all right, but you need to, you need to be OK yourself, OK? As light fades, the shutters come down. Lifeguards call police. Any luck, Central? No, not yet. Chapo needs Amita's assistance, Mama. but she's suffering from heat stroke. Hey. I was trying to get her moving, getting her coherent, getting her to try and help us. You okay? Oh, I hadn't dealt with a situation like this before. Anita. Hey. We're just going to sit down the first aid bed. Oh. Anita. Hey. Hey. Tough love is sometimes a good thing. We need you. Stay awake and alert, okay? So all of a sudden, you know, the woman looks like she's unconscious. Anita. Hello. It's suddenly gone from bad to worse. The search had gone on for quite a while. The worry's really starting to set in with me. The mother couldn't help us, so the five-year-old brother was the, the key witness. Lifeguards are looking for a small boy in a white singlet. Big brother kept the family together, that Arvo. Anita, listen, you need to help us now. Are you, are you awake? Is that Manny? No. As the search intensifies, police arrive. Mate, we've done a couple of loops through the pavilion, like the kids park around the back and just looping along the beach now. Were you on the beach with anyone else? You just want to see him. Yeah. It's been 45 minutes since the three-year-old went missing. Then, Dino spots a small boy in the shallows. When I first saw him, there was a lady there watching, and I went and asked her, I said, is this your child? And she said, no. Dino confirms the child is unaccompanied by a parent. Uh, I've got a kid, no one seems to own, I've picked him up. Uh, you want to come for a drive? Jeez, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's his kid, because uh, I've just picked him up and taken him. It's the brother, no, it's Dino. We just needed some confirmation before we got all the way back up to the tower. Hey, this other buggy. Is this Maddie? Is this your brother? Is this Maddie? Yes. That's him. Tim, all right. You want to have a race? Race him. Let's go. Let's go see Mum. 
stoked. We've got him. Let's get him up to the tower, get him to mum, because mum was mum's in a state of shock. We got him. We got him. 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 Sorry, guys. You could literally see the relief, like, pouring out of her face. father of two himself, Dino shares the relief. Yeah, as a parent, it's really nice to see a family reunited. Here we go. Here we go. You know, the love for a child is stronger than any love that you can feel for another human. To think that that could be jeopardised or taken away from you in a brief moment is, is truly terrifying. Where did you go? Mommy. I was surfing and then I just... Just try and relax. Yeah? Just, just out of the blue? He was just surfing and he came out of the sea and he started complaining about stomach cramps. So I let him sit here for a while and I thought it would sort of pass and it didn't. It just got progressively worse. Oh. Terry needs help diagnosing the problem. Bobby Yaldwin, Yak, is part-time lifeguard and full-time paramedic. Worse when I push? Ah. And has everything been normal lately? All been good? Just came out of the blue, did it? Now tell me, is it definitely in the middle here? It's not on the right-hand side here? It's a little bit here, but mostly in this A little bit middle. here. Now obviously, I can't see you haven't had your appendix out before. No, you haven't. Will you all get an ambo down, yeah? We're going to go with an ambulance. Uh, ambulance, please. And, uh, it's a little bit to the right-hand side, which may, may be his appendix, I'm not sure, but he's saying it's more central and just a little bit to the right. It's OK, champ. We're going we're gonna to take the pain away, all right? It's all right. All right. It's all right, mate. This will help, all right? You've got to breathe through it, mate. You've just got to breathe through it and try and relax. Lifeguards administer methoxyfluorine. All right, leave it in there. Better known as the green whistle. Just try nice and slowly, all right? Nice breaths, just as you're breathing normally. The powerful painkiller should take effect in seconds. All right, mate, it'll work. This will work, all right? Your body's got receptors and the pain signal has a pathway it goes through and it's just blocking those pain. Yeah. But Calvin is only getting worse. I know, mate, I know. Unfortunately, we just got to wait for the ambo, mate. Keep, keep trying to breathe through that methoxy, OK? It'll be here shortly. One, two, three, up. If Calvin is suffering a ruptured appendix, he requires urgent treatment. Up, 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 up. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, 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 talk to Brendan, talk to Brendan. In the, in the middle and, and on the side. Paramedics must manage Calvin's pain before they move him. He needs more than the green whistle. Calvin's now endured 20 minutes of excruciating pain. Once he's once he's had this morphine, he'll definitely go to City Children's. We're just trying to make it as comfortable for him as we can before we move him. By now, the strong opiate should be working. Okay, so if it was ten before, what's the number now? Ten. Just relax, mate, all right? Now we're going to lift you on this board, OK? It's only for about three or four metres, all right? We'll get you in the truck. OK, is so everyone all right? Yep, I'm yep. good. No, My good. son's a very similar age to that young boy, and I hate seeing kids in pain. It's one of the things that really gets to me. They got him on the morphine, so hopefully everything's going to be OK. A trip to emergency will hopefully reveal the cause of Calvin's pain. Bondi's first stubbed toe of the year. Two-year-old Lenny fell off his scooter. <laughs> he never cries. 
Did you cry when you did it? No, you didn't cry. When you did it. This, uh, this one, band aid. Ready? <laughs> you know what's going to make it better, Lenny? We're going to go and have pizza and ice cream. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so hard, Jenny, give him a high five. Come on, mate. High five? High five? Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> fell over on his scooter. They all the kids fall over on their scooter down here. He's five. And Calvin? His excruciating pain was caused by a blocked intestine. Hope that it never happens again. After a night in hospital and a few days rest, he's back at Bondi and working his style. I knew, I knew it was going to be really difficult. I had to get back up. Just remember that thought of, oh, no. Mick, the jogger notorious for his white speedos, is having a seizure at the north end. Harry's is already there. Uh, Luke's gone down as well, and Jesse's there. We're lucky we've got an ambulance parked across the road um, out the front of Bondi Surf Club. So we're going to try and see if we can get those guys to attend. I saw them there earlier having a coffee, and then, yeah, we're really lucky because they're attending. They're right here. Hey, guys. Hello, buddy. How are you feeling? It's the ambulance. We got the paramedics down, and then it just pretty much snowballed from there. So next we're going to get the spineboard in behind him. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Mick, well known for avoiding human contact, is about to find himself surrounded by half a dozen people as soon as he regains consciousness. Lift I, count three. I knew it was going to be hypoxic when he woke up. It's lack of oxygen to the brain. And I knew all hell was going to break loose. Mick is disoriented from hypoxia, a lack of oxygen to the brain. I tell you, stop it! He needs to be examined by doctors. Lifeguards restrain Mick no! while paramedics administer a sedative. It must have been pretty hard for Mick because we had him strapped to the spinal board. Even with five lifeguards and two AMBO officers, we were struggling to, to keep him down. We're trying to help you. Help, please! I promise we're trying to help you, mate. Please. It's extremely upsetting to see someone like Mick in pain, and I felt like we were inflicting the pain to a degree. Eventually, Mick is sedated and can be transported to the ambulance for further medical care. I count of three, one, two, three, let's go. No, we do. A lot of rescues with people you don't know, and, you know, mix a character that we see every day. Lifeguarding is emotionally taxing. Even more so when the lifeguards are dealing with someone they know. I need to sit out. <laughs> need to get me breath back. It's very physical. And it's, and it's emotional too, you know, so I, I'm a wreck. Like, you don't get it out of me much, but that was full on. Serious ligament or tendon damage could spell the end of his season. Pain out of 10 was 10, for sure. Once you look down and you see that like, your shoulder's sticking out here and it's all mangled, it definitely gets worse. The finger over it, mate. Today, it's Jethro that will get a taste of the green whistle. Nah, good, 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 good. Keep sucking, keep sucking, keep sucking. The green whistle seems to affect everyone in such a diverse way, and Jethro not being too big of a guy, it affected him quite quickly. Pop the locker and take me to Charlestown. Come and crew, prepare the doors for landing. <laughs> Might have been even flying a 747 at one stage. Since you're a captain <laughs> speaking, you would be the most gorgeous flight attendant too. Should have been a flight attendant. <laughs> Keep sucking up. Paramedics have been called. Until then, lifeguards manage Jethro's pain. This is whistle number two. After the second whistle, I have no recollection of what I said. I know I could have said anything. Paramount <laughs> <laughs> eel. Paramount <laughs> eel. This extended care paramedic will attempt to relocate Jethro's shoulder on the first aid bed. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder before? No. No, first time. And another important caregiver shows up. Jethro's girlfriend, Kaya. Okay. Lifeguards deal with dislocations every week, but they are less used to seeing one of their own in pain. 
This whole start of this year has been an absolute buster for us. One, two, three, lift. This is such a diverse job that you put your own life on the line. You're out searching for a body, and then all of a sudden, he's just, he can't work. In hospital, Jethro will learn if his lifeguarding season is over. Following two green whistles and morphine, Jethro receives ketamine so doctors can forcibly relocate his shoulder. Nine-year-old Zach has suffered a blue bottle sting over his entire leg. Relax a little bit. Okay. Just chill out. This is a magic spray. Is it going to hurt? No, it, it didn't really calm down at all. Zach arrived from the UK just four hours ago got attacked by probably one of the worst things that can happen to you at the beach. So, you know, I think for the for the poor poor thing, it was just this horribly overwhelming scenario. No, 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 no. That poor father was watching his son scream for help and he couldn't do anything and and we really felt for him. Applying hot water is impractical in the tower. Here we go. Good stuff. It's gonna fix it. It doesn't hurt though. As that. As that. No. 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 It was a really difficult moment to not be able to take a child out of out of its pain and settle it down. That was just becoming extremely hard to watch. Team leader Harry's decides to take Zach to the showers and neutralise the pain with hot water. I'm a bit rattled. So we get him across the road to some hot water, which we think, you know, is a good chance of doing some good. And uh, now we hit another speed bump. Zach refuses treatment. And can you blame him? He just come out of the water and had a really bad experience. He's not so fond of going near water again. It's going to be okay. Feel better. I promise you. Put some water on it. Yeah. That's it. It's going to be okay. Just want to put a bit of water. Good boy. Okay. All right. No. Come on, come out. No. No, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay. Good boy. Oh, it's okay. Then things get even more complicated. All of a sudden, I turn around and Dad's feeling faint. Good idea to get the ambo. Have a look at him. Um, Dad's not feeling very well now. Can this situation get any worse? Yeah, we're just worried about Dad now. His glands have come up in his groin, which is a, not a nice feeling either. So, uh, you know, I think Dad's doing pretty well to hold up and be pretty stoic, despite the odds. I've got a son around the same age as Zach, so I can imagine exactly how the father feels. I thought he's going to go into a seizure. Mate, um, what do you think about using a epoxy? We're still not interested. 100% singers. Yeah. The green whistle is an analgesic gas that provides powerful pain relief. Harry's also decides it's time for backup. Ambulance, thank you. He might be in that one percentile where he's actually allergic to blue bottles. Zach's father is back on his feet as lifeguards administer the green whistle. Oh, no. So what you've got to do is you've got to put it in your mouth like this, all right, and just breathe it in, breathe it and in it's going to take the pain away for you. Breathe. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Nice deep breath. Good boy. I know. No, I know. Look how brave you've been. There you go. Oh, wow. Good man. That's progress. See, we're getting yeah, a lot better, aren't we? Yeah. How good silence. 
Ah, the sweet sound of silence. Ten minutes ago, wasn't the case. Never seen a kid like that before. He's like almost possessed, and now he's he's in the shower cruising. Paramedics arrive to find a much calmer patient. Zach is given a clean bill of health. Hey Zach, that was your first trip to Australia, mate. Yeah, love, love this place. What do you think of Bondi? <laughs> oh, thumbs down. Hey, what do you think of these guys? <laughs> 